Welcome to the SnapLogic video tutorial series. My name is Kevin Ruan. I am a senior customer experience manager here at SnapLogic. Today we'll take a look at the Azure Active Directory single sign-on configuration with SnapLogic. Okay, to start our process, we'll need to first navigate to Microsoft Azure and its uh, Azure Active Directory module and start configuring uh, an enterprise application that will work uh, specifically with uh, SnapLogic. So I've uh, already navigated into my own uh, account. I've clicked on the Azure Active Directory. And under the enterprise application, uh, by default, you're going to get a set of uh, standard apps that are provided by uh, Microsoft. But what we need to do is click on New Application here and then we'll need to configure a non-gallery application since SnapLogic is not a featured application listed from the gallery just click that and then we'll give it a name we'll call it SnapLogic here and we'll go ahead and add this application it's going to take a little moment to actually add this application but once it's configured you're now presented in the screen Okay, from here, the first thing we need to do is essentially add a few users to this particular org, so our application, so we can allow these users to log in. So I'm going to add a, uh, a new user here, uh, and I've already uh, actually added this person earlier. This K at Oregon State, this is actually my Oregon State uh, email address, and I'm going to select this user so that I can enable this user to to interface with uh, SnapLogic as a single sign-on user. So now you can see I've actually have this user provisioned here. Next, we need to click on the single sign-on section under Manage and click on the SAML option. Okay, so Microsoft uh, Azure actually came up with this nice new view now, this new uh, configuration experience. Uh, for configuring uh, SAML 2.0. And what we're going to need from this screen is really this Federation Metadata uh, XML file. So I'm going to download that. And once you get here, we can actually navigate to SnapLogic and, uh, and upload this configuration file. All right, so here we are in SnapLogic. I've actually navigated to the Snowflake organization and under the manager user settings uh, settings uh, click on the single sign on your SAML 2.0 configure SSO icon and with in this pop-up we'll just go ahead and upload and then an IDP metadata file so I clicked on the open file icon and then we're just going to select the Federation metadata XML from the drop down and then we're going to hit update so once that's completed, uh, you'll see SnapLogic populate the IDP entity ID and then the HTTP post endpoints here. You don't necessarily have to use these, but what's important is really this SnapLogic service provider metadata file. Let's click and download this. Okay, so once it's downloaded, we're going to go and navigate back into the Azure screen, Azure uh, console. And under the uh, single sign on configuration and the basic SML configuration, we're going to click to edit. And in this configuration screen, there's an option to upload a metadata file from the service provider. We're going to click that. Clicking on the folder to navigate to that particular file. On your local drive, hit open and hit upload. Okay. So this is going to go ahead and populate the identifier into the ID and the reply URL automatically for you. And then just hit save at this point. Okay, and now it's saved. Okay, so let me navigate back to the SnapLogic Manager. So it's important to note that uh, this particular single sign-on process is working with our Snowflake org only. If you have multiple orgs, what you need to do is navigate to each one of these orgs and upload the same Federation metadata XML uh, in this configuration. 
Otherwise, SnapLogic is going to complain that you will have uh, different identity providers for all of your orgs. So it's all or nothing. So just remember that implication. Um, really, the next step after you've uh, uploaded the SnapLogic service provider metadata XML to Azure, you just need to make sure that the user uh, that's going to be interfacing with this application via SSO is added uh, to the users list for this org. And in this case, my Ruan K at Oregon State user is uh, actually available here. Um, the implication here then is that this user should be uh, a, a uh, UI accessible uh, user. So let me just uncheck that and check this icon and then hit update okay all right so we're ready to use the single sign-on feature at this point so navigate to the snaplogic login screen uh, URL sorry uh, at elastic that snaplogic.com and click on login via single sign-on here you're prompted to provide an organization name in this case we configure SSO for our snowflake org so we're just gonna type in snowflake here and we're just gonna hit login and this is going to take you to the Microsoft account login. And we're going to use the pick the user that we just configured for, for this SnapLogic application, which is run K at Oregon State at EDU. And in this case, my Oregon State login is already um, pre configured in this case. Um, I've already logged in before, and that's why it's actually taking me directly. Uh, into the application otherwise you know you just need to type in the username and password one time and uh, the next time you uh, navigate and choose to sign in using the single sign-on feature from SnapLogic it should just take you directly into the app so just showing that to you again we just log out of here back into my sign-in screen click login via SSO click login button here and it should take me directly again into the application so another way to uh, enjoy this feature is actually from the azure side and i'm just going to navigate to azure.com again i'm just going to log in here and chrome is going to log me in automatically because uh, it was cached but let me just navigate to our portal And click on your username on the top right hand side and go to view account. And what we're going to do is we're just going to switch directory really quickly from my Oregon State directory all the way down to my default. Just sign in with my default. And this is my default directory, which will give me a list of applications that I have permission to access. And here I can see the Snap Logic. Um, custom application that we just configured in an icon here. You can actually change this icon to match the SnapLogic logo if you like, but you don't have to. So clicking on this icon also will allow you to navigate directly uh, into the application, just like that. And that should be it. So if you have any more questions or if you need more information, feel free to visit snaplogic.com. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much and have a good one.